Hi, I'm Stephen Holder here with Rick Stroud at One Buck Place as the Bucks get ready for a big division matchup against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, here on Wednesday, a little bit of news, obviously starting yesterday really, uh, the, that unfolded with the release of Savvy Piscatelli. A little bit of a surprise given uh, the lack of depth there with Cody Grimm going down for the season. But Rick, right. tell us, if you will, what was really behind this decision? What went into uh, the decision to release Abby Piscatelli? Well, you mean other than the fact that he couldn't play very well. <laughs> I think it comes down to that. And, and, you know, they had several chances to play him going back as far as in the off season when they looked at Sean Jones. They signed him. That was supposed to be a competition. And then Tenard Jackson, you know, goes on the suspended list for a year. And instead of looking to Savvy, they go to Cody Grimm. Well, it was interesting in, in talking to Corey Lynch, you know, when we were talking to him about, well, you know, did you feel like you were ever passed over? He said, well, did you see how, how Cody Grimm played? And he did I think okay. That was the answer. He yeah. did fine. And, and, and Savvy did not. I think the last straw, and they won't admit this, Stephen, but I think the last straw, uh, camel broke the back kind of thing, was this final game against Baltimore, four plays after he enters the game when Cody Grimm gets hurt. Uh, Todd Heap uh, you know, goes for a 65-yard touchdown. And, and ever since, all they would say is that it was a miscommunication. No one has really taken the blame. I think we found out yesterday with his release that that was the blame. Now, they're going to look at three guys. Obviously, Corey Lynch will be the first guy I think that will get the biggest look. Uh, Vince Anderson will be a guy from uh, the practice squad that they have brought up. And, and they're excited about him because he was with the Giants for a while. He's been here for a number of weeks. They, they like him. And then finally, Larry Asante, a guy that, that uh, Raheem Morris actually recruited at Kansas State when he was at Coffeyville, I think junior college yeah. somewhere. So those three guys will get a look. None of them have ever started a game in the NFL. So we'll, we'll follow that matchup during throughout the week. And, and, you know, one other thing in the secondary that's going to be of note this week will be that we see the matchup between Roddy White and obviously a key to leave, and that's something that's going to be great for years to come. Yeah, it is, and it's one that is really going to be a premier matchup. You have a key to leave who's second in the NFL in interceptions right now with six. Roddy White is having a career year, uh, potentially an All-Pro type season. Uh, the interesting thing is, though, going back to the first meeting. He held, or Tlaib held Roddy White in check. Now, Roddy White did hurt his knee in that game, and he wasn't 100%, so right. give, give him some credit there or some leeway there. But at the same time, he had his worst game of the season. Four catches, 49 yards. Those are both season lows for Roddy White. Uh, he, came, he was coming off a 201-yard game and followed that game with a 138-yard wow. performance. So clearly, there was, some, there was actually some, some impact there from Tlaib in, in that matchup. And Roddy White gave him credit today, saying he's the best defensive player on this team. Hard to argue with that. We're looking forward to that matchup, and it's a matchup that's going to go a long way in determining the outcome of this game, I think. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll see how things go uh, on game day. And uh, come back here to TampaBay.com for more.